Hello everyone, my name is Dominique Waddell and for my museum tour, I'm going to take you through the Museum of Modern Art or MoMA. It is located in New York. This museum displays modern and contemporary art. It was founded by Abby Rockefeller, Lily P. Bliss, and Mary Quinn Sullivan, and they wanted to create an institution devoted to collecting the art of the time. So that's how it became the Museum of Modern Art. It first opened to the public November 8th, 1929. For my first piece today, I'm gonna to be talking about Unknown Pleasure by Matthew Wong. And this piece was made back in 2019. So it's one of the more recent pieces in the museum. Um, unfortunately, that same year, Matthew Wong did decide to end his own life and after a long battle with depression, and I think that reflects a lot in his piece, it's called Unknown Pleasure. So I feel like it's sort of this winding road to this top of the mountain. It's bright white, it pops out. It's this place that is just somewhere unreachable. And I feel like he felt like that while creating this piece, this happiness, this bright yellow, the bright whites, the bright colors, they're so far away that it feels like they will never be known. They're unknown pleasures. He'll never feel that sense of joy. And I love the use of the different shades of blue to kind of make the contrast with the yellow and the sky and the way the white pops off of the dark mountaintop. All of these contrasting colors, I feel like could reflect his contrasting feelings. For my second piece, I'm gonna be talking about Still Life number 57 by Tom Wesselman. It was created from the year 1969 to 1970. It's oil paint on canvas and it's six different pieces put together and you can't tell from the picture but the carpet is real carpet that um, Tom Wesselman painted over. I really personally like this piece because I like the contrast between the different colors and I also like how the orange is like a different perspective in the washing machine. The orange looks more 3D. You can see all the different shading and the, where the light is coming from, from that circle on the orange. And then the washing machine looks two-dimensional. So I like that contrast. And it was kind of a critique on the consumerism of the 60s and how all of these new products were combining with the old products and how these new products felt like they were necessary for modern life, like the washing machine. From the same exhibition, we have a classic piece Campbell's Soup Cans by Andy Warhol. I personally like this piece because I like how it's something that you wouldn't expect to be art and be so popular, but he made it into art, which I think is really cool. Um, something that I never no noticed is that they're actually all different kinds of soup and it's Every single can is a different canvas. Um, there's in total 32 canvases for each kind of soup. It was made in 1962. And Warhol's um, goal was to appeal to the masses. Also another critique on the rise in consumerism in the 60s. Um, this piece uses, utilizes obviously a lot of repetition because they're all the same cans, but it's different shading, different colors, and that's what I think really makes this piece unique. My fourth piece, I'm going to be talking about Opus 217, against the enamel of a background rhythmic with beats and angles, tones, and tints, portrait of M. Felix Fanon in 1890. 
this is the longest title of all of my pieces today and it's by Paul Signeck. So what I really like about this piece is the way that there are so many different contrasting colors in the background. They play off of each other really well. The blues and the oranges and then purple and yellow and your eye travels around and everywhere you look it's a new pattern. And I like the contrast between Felix Fanon in the front, who coined the term Neo-Impressionism, which is the works of the 1880s by artists like Signac or George Seurat. Um, and I really like how he is very angular, the way his elbows are pointed, his nose is very sharp, his fingers are even like, pointy and how that contrasts with the curvilinear flow in the background. And I just thought this piece was super cool. I really liked it. So for my final piece, I'm going to be talking about my personal favorite piece of artwork ever created, Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Um, I personally love this piece because I love the colors and I love how you can see all of the individual brush strokes and the way that it's a reflection of what he saw but it's not directly it's more of what he felt as well at the time and I feel like I just connect a lot with this piece I love the swirls in the sky it's just one of my favorites. Um, it was inspired by his view at the asylum where he spent 12 months looking for help with his mental illness. Um, I feel like the church, it looks, they a lot of the buildings, they look like what he saw from his window, but it was more like the interpretations of how these buildings made him feel and not like accurate, which is something I really like. Um, in less than 10 years, Vincent van Gogh created over 900 paintings. And when he was alive, he actually only ever sold one painting. And once he passed away, his art blew up. Overall, this website was pretty easy to use. I think that anyone can really navigate it. I gave it four out of five stars because while it was easy to use, they didn't have any virtual tours unless you signed up. And I think there was a fee with those. So that was, and there's also no virtual tours on Google Arts and Culture. So that's what brought it down that one star. However, they are open right now and you can go on a lot of different tours at the actual museum. So I think it's okay that they don't have a virtual museum. But in the future, I probably would go here to on a field trip with students because it's free for kids and only $25 for adults. So that would be nice. You wouldn't have to pay for the student's entry. Um, but I don't think I would show any like virtual tours during COVID teaching because they don't exist. Okay, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, have a great night.